Hi there, welcome to Viper Bites. I'm Matt Dolly, and you're watching us right here on the Vipers Network. Now, before we go any further, make sure you hit that like button and make sure you are subscribed because we have plenty of great fantasy football analysis coming your way. On this week's show, we are talking about the six wide receivers that you need to buy ahead of week number eight. So let's get right to it here. Let's talk about Chris Olave of the New Orleans Saints. Now, Olave, he has two things working against him. One is that Derek Carr, he's got that bum shoulder. And two, Alvin Kamara's usage since his return from suspension. Olave has 10 plus targets in five of seven games. And in those two games in which he failed to hit double digit targets, he was dealing with either a toe injury or he was dealing with Derek Carr's bum shoulder, which limited him to basically throw the ball no more than 10 feet down the field. Now, a closer look at those five games, you will see a receiver that has at least 85 yards receiving in four of those five contests, not averaging 91 yards per game and 16.3 fantasy points per game. Those 16.3 fantasy points per game, that has him as a wide receiver 16 when it comes to PPR formats. And while his year-to-date total has him at wide receiver 19, it's only a matter of time before Olave starts finding the end zone. Touchdown regression is real, people. Last season, Olave had just four touchdowns. This season, he's only got one. Olave has 67 targets there without a drop. That is the most in the NFL. So let's hope that he drops his whole reckless driving phase that he's going through because his next three weeks include Indianapolis, Chicago, and Minnesota. Another wide receiver that I'm buying right now, I'm buying the dip on Kelvin Ridley, who came into 2023 like a wrecking ball. All kinds of hypes. We saw the offseason videos and we all fell in love. You know, admit it, you fell in love with his fancy footwork that he saw during Jaguars training camp videos. But we forgot a couple things here. One, Christian Kirk is still pretty good at this football thing. And two, Doug Peterson has what? Two 900-yard receivers over his 10 years as an offensive coordinator and as a head coach. Now, now that we're all down on Calvin Ridley, it is time to buy that dip, as I like to say. This week, he gets a get-right type game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is all about the matchup. Pittsburgh runs single high coverage at the seventh highest rate and have allowed outside wide receivers to average 147.7 yards per game. That is the third most in the NFL. Against single high coverage, Ridley leads the Jaguars in target share and air yards. This is exactly what Ridley and the Jaguars need to kickstart this offense. Another wide receiver that you need to buy, buy, buy is Christian Watson. Yes, I know you're already saying bye, bye, bye to him for your fantasy lamps, but stop. Do not make that mistake. Do not make it. We are doomed to repeat our errors if we do not learn from them. What did we not learn last season when it came to Christian Watson? Now I get it. Watson is the wide receiver 94 and he missed the Packers first three games. Green Bay, they also had that bye week in week number six. That leaves just a three game sample in which his first game he was coming back from a hamstring injury. In his second game, he had 91 yards receiving and he saw seven targets. Then last week, the Broncos recognized that Watson was close to 100% so they had PS2 there, Patrick Sertain, follow him all over the field. And now we find out that he may have hurt his knee along the way. Now, right now, you are getting an injury discount baked into the price. And we know what Watson did over the back half of the 2022 season. And that was to help many of us to our fantasy championships. Initial reports, they've been positive. But if you want to get a better deal when it comes to Watson, mention his history of his right knee, hip, butt, whatever history that he has. It's been problematic to say the least, considering he had a right meniscus repair back in college. He had his right knee scope back in June of 2022. He's got those right hamstring injuries there going back to 2022 and again this season. So there is going to be some wiggle room there when you're negotiating Watson's value to your roster. Another wide receiver that I'm buying is Marquise Hollywood Brown. Yes, he's another wide receiver that is going relatively unnoticed thus far this season. We call this the Josh Dobbs effect. It's not that he's been terrible. On, on the contrary, he is the wide receiver 21 this season. 
with more than 91 fantasy points. He's averaging 13 fantasy points per game. Now is the perfect time to strike. Why? He's coming off back-to-back -back weeks in which he's failed to produce more than eight fantasy points. So managers, they're seeing that dip right now in his fantasy production, and they may be considering trying to get out of the game. Fantasy is all about what have you done for me lately, and people have already forgotten weeks two through weeks five when Brown had over 16 fantasy points in each of those contests. Brown has had at least 10 targets this season in four of seven games. And here's the biggest deal. Kyler Murray was recently activated off the PUP and started practicing in full this week. How good can Hollywood Brown be? Before injury sidetracked him in that 2022 campaign, he was the wide receiver six with Murray under center from weeks one through six. He was averaging 18.3 fantasy points per game in those PPR formats. Brown and Murray, they are tight. And Brown said this about Murray. He's not coming back to be average. He's coming back to prove a point. Now, I'm no translator, but I think that means that Brown is about to pop off here in the second half. Another wide receiver that I'm ready to pop off on here is Jalen Waddle. He is doing exactly what he had done last season. Targets per game and target share are both the same as they were last season. However, we are talking about his efficiency that has taken a bit of a hit as his touchdowns per game dropped from 0.47 to 0.33. And more significantly, his yards per reception has gone from 18.1 in 2022 to 11.9 here in 2023. And fantasy managers... They have noticed because they invested highly in him, likely a late second, early third round type of selection in their fantasy drafts. Fantasy managers may have also noticed that once again, he did not produce last week, but likely missed that dealing with that back energy, which limited him to about 15 routes. Those were some pretty good routes there. I mean, 15 routes resulting in six catches for 63 yards. But the biggest thing is Waddle has been overshadowed by the record pace that Tyreek Hill has been setting. Hill sits at 902 receiving yards, while Waddle has just a mediocre 359 on 30 receptions. But he does have 41 targets and 10 targets and 9 more targets respectively prior to last week. Week 8, if Waddle is healthy, could be his big break as we know that Hill is dealing with that hip issue that could sideline him not only this week, but maybe some other weeks down the road. So this could become Jalen Waddle's offense, and we know what he is capable of doing. We've seen him without Hill in the past. He has been able to produce. This week, Waddle is facing a New England team that is allowing 32.47 fantasy points per game to wide receivers. Back on September 17th, Waddle had four grabs for 86 yards against his Patriots team. And when I look at the rest of these wide receivers for the Miami Dolphins, what are we looking at? Chase Claypool, uh, Cedric Wilson, Robbie Anderson. I mean, these are guys that are not going to cut into Jalen Waddle's production. So when I look at this 32.47 fantasy points available on a per game basis, a good portion of those are likely going to be funneled towards Jalen Waddle. And finally, my last wide receiver that I'm buying up this week is Terry McLaren of the Washington Commanders. He is a prime time buy asset in fantasy right now. He ranks inside the top 10 when it comes to fantasy points negated by a penalty. If you add up all those lost fantasy points to his current total, he goes from wide receiver 26 all the way up to wide receiver 18. He has also been consistently producing 10 or more fantasy points in five of seven contests this season. And Sam Howell is looking for him. Howell has been working the inside of the field there to Logan Thomas and Curtis Samuel, but he's been not afraid to toss that ball out to Terry McLaren, something that we can't say about Jahan Dotson. What has me the most excited and willing to buy is the splits that we've seen from the first three games of the season versus the last month. His target share has increased by 7%. His air yard share has increased by 8%. He's averaging nearly five fantasy points per game more over the last month than he had the first three weeks. And according to fantasy points data, his first read target share has gone from 24% up to 30%, which is a great metric when predicting future success. And if you want to predict future fantasy success, you need to continue to tune into the Vipers Network each and every week. We got you covered with all the latest fantasy news.